Well, it's a beautiful winter day to be out walking around with my primitive bow. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of animals moving, so it's kind of quiet today, but I've gotten a lot of requests from YouTubers wanting to know how I make this primitive bow and wanting me to show them how I did it. So this is videos for y'all. Um, there's a tremendous number of different woods you can use to make a bow. Um, hickory, black locust, Osage orange, white ash, hackberry, mulberry, oak, uh, maple, and that's just off the top of my head. Um, in the western states you can use vine maple, you can use um, Pacific yew, those are both very good bow woods. Juniper in the deserts uh, is a very good bow wood as well if it's sinew backed. But here in this video we're going to address just making a simple self bow which is basically just a piece of wood, no backing on it. Um, for beginners, I would recommend hickory because it's common, it grows in very easy to find straight pieces, and it's very forgiving of mistakes. Um, Osage orange is probably number two. The only thing is that um, it tends to be a little bit more challenging because it, the grain is not as straight. You get more knots in it, more wiggles, which can be a challenge for beginners. So um, for beginners, I would say, like I said, go with a hickory bow first. Well, I'm out here in southeastern Iowa, and there's just a, a tremendous amount of bow wood uh, that can be had in this area. Um, so come with me. I'm going to show you guys what to look for and how to collect your wood. When looking for bow quality trees, avoid the following. Trees with large wounds or cracks. Trees with large knots and branches. or those with severe kinks like this one. If the tree has any of these flaws, it's best to leave it behind and keep looking. When inspecting a tree, examine it from all sides. Straight, even, and undamaged bark, as shown here, indicates that underlying wood will have the same qualities and will make first-rate bows with minimal work. Okay, we got a really good looking Osage tree right there. I like that one on the left because it's nice and straight. It doesn't have any knots in it or any twist in it. The grain is really straight and um, we're gonna go ahead and cut that one down and take that home with us. Oh yeah, be sure to bring plenty of water. Working like this will make you very thirsty. Well, here it is, we got it. Beautiful stave of Osage Orange. And um, this will make probably two nice bows. Um, you see it's very straight, uh, no knots or kinks or bends in it. Um, this is ideal, this will make great bows. And this is what we're looking for. For the next step, wear eye, ear, and hand protection. Though not primitive, I prefer to use a circular saw to cut a groove down the center of the log for its entire length. When the log is split, it will follow this groove resulting in less waste and less work later on.
Here you can see the groove that's been cut down the entire length of the log. Start splitting the log by hammering wedges into one end. As the split travels down the log, place a second wedge further down the log. Continue leapfrogging the wedges until the log is split completely in two. Okay, there they are. I got uh, both of these staves. This, this log split right down the center, which is exactly what I wanted. And now I've got two beautiful staves for making bows. For the next stage of making a bow, uh, you're going to need a tool like this. This is a draw knife. Basically has two handles on it that you can use to remove wood by pulling it towards you. Uh, great tool. If you don't have one, you can improvise by making one out of an old leaf spring. If you have an old machete lying around, you can use that as well. Uh, but those are more or less second rate substitutes. Um, if you're going to make a lot of bows and you want to do this seriously, a draw knife you really are going to need. When making a bow out of Osage Orange, I start by removing the bark to get a better look at the condition of the underlying wood. I've taken all the bark off of this thing and the stave looks pretty good. Um, however, we have what looks like a saw cut here at this near the end of this stave and also um, a spot here where it looks like a, another tree might have fallen against this tree and gouged the bark out. So what I'm going to have to do is take all of this white sapwood off and go down low into the heartwood and get to some sound wood. Now this is not too bad, but I want a, I want a nice pristine back. Okay, all the white sapwood I removed, and you can see this piece of wood is really clean. Look, looks great. Um, that flaw that was down here earlier, I've worked that out. That's not present anymore. Um, you can see it's a nice straight piece of wood. There's no big knots in it. And now our next step is to establish one growth ring on the back of the bow. And this is going to be a very important step.